And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're going through a pile of games that are fairly poor. The first two are okay, I guess, at best. The rest aren't that great. I just didn't want to do full reviews of them, just kind of quick summary reviews of them, and uh, you can take that as you will. So, let's get going. First we have Hot Pot Havoc. Hot Pot Havoc is a game in which there's a bunch of ingredients that you have your own deck. It's kind of a weird thing. Each player has their own deck of cards, and they're all going through these, but I don't even know why each player has their own deck. They're slightly different ingredients, putting them out, grabbing them, trying to match different recipes on the table and get points. But it's one of those games that has a lot of extra rules that don't provide a lot of extra things. Like, you're going to pick how many ingredients you can take each turn, and and then how many stars you need to have. And it's just, it's, it's, a, it's messy, I think, for a speed game. Hot Pot Havoc, meh. Another meh here is Ariantis. This is a remake of an old Leo Calavini game. And in this one, you're just moving around the board and this board is slowly congesting and coming together. And you're getting, it has something to do with magic schools and everything. And it's just not very interesting. It's kind of boring. We played this one live. You can see us playing this live on the channel if you want to see how that works. Probably should hold it properly here. Um, but this is one of those games that I'm thinking, I don't know why this one needed to be made. The original game was like Carolus Magnus, if you're wondering. But Ariantes, despite it not being a very interesting name, has a theme that's really not there. And it's just kind of moving stuff together. This was a game a lot of people enjoyed when it came out. I thought it was fine. After playing it now, 10, 15 years later, I'm going, meh, this is one that we could have left in the past. So those are the okay ones. Heaven, Here I Come. This is a social deduction game. And, <laughs> okay, this one made me laugh a lot. In this one, you're trying to be not... You're trying to, you're either the scapegoat or not. Everyone is assigned a sin. So the sins are ranked. Um, like lust is, I think, the lowest sin and pride is the highest sin, whatever it is. You get two cards that tell you what your sin is, and you, the one's on each side of you. So you, I know one of the pair that my opponent has, but the cards in all different combinations give you stuff. Then you can look at one other card, and then you just start randomly accusing people. And then the scapegoat wins or everyone else wins. It's a typical deduction game with an interesting beginning, but the middle, you literally just kind of randomly talk until you find somebody. It just isn't a very good game. Heaven, here I come. I do like that the, the, the theme was funny. Another social deduction game, Captain's Gambit, Kings of Infinite Space. So for some reason, this has a Shakespearean thing. In this game, you're Hamlet or um, one of 12 different ca uh, captains, Iago, Puck, Viola, just some Shakespearean characters that are in space. And they all have a very different goal. Maybe one person is trying to kill somebody else, or the Romeo and Juliet, or the, if one wins, the other wins, things like that. There's these different goals. And then when you play the game, it's a complicated game of coup. It's very similar to coup, where you can take an action, and other people can say, no, you don't have that card in your hand, and then someone loses life or not. So if you thought coup is fun, but you want to make the game a whole lot longer and more complex, then play Captain's Gambit. Or you could just play coup. Next, we have Zoo Tiles. Heim. Strategic tile laying game. Yeah, it is not really a strategic tile laying game. You are you have a pre-constructed deck of cards and you're just placing these tiles around each other. This is kind of messy. It's neat tiles. The theme isn't terrible, just a messy tile laying game. Oh wow, this one I wanted to like because it looks so pretty. Fate of the Phantos. The Iridium Wars. That's a beautiful cover. And you know what? That lasts throughout this game. In this game, you have these really cool cards uh, that are different people. And then you pick an action on your turns. So you're getting this Iridium or whatever this, this uh, whatever this resource is that you're collecting. Or stealing it from other people. And then there's all these different abilities that go off. And it's just chaos. Chaos in a box. The rules aren't great, it's way too long, and it's just constant, take that chaos. And maybe it would, uh, if I knew this world a little better, I might like it more, but I doubt it. Not a good game. Mythalix. Ah, oh, this is one I thought I would like. Grand Gamers Guild, I tend to like most of their things. When I saw this and saw that you went around and fought each other, it's a light game in many regards. 
So there's a couple problems with this one. First of all, the rules aren't very good at all. Secondly, you kind of just run around and hit other people, or you're attacking board spaces more than anything else. I like to go back, I'm not quite sure, because the rules are pretty terrible. But the third thing is, the randomness in this game is insane. You can have two army cards. You, you have to spend money, which takes a long time to get. Like, each turn you get one money, and you might get other things that give you some extra money if you win battles. But you might get two money a turn, maybe. It costs three to buy the cheapest card. So let's say you get some money, you buy these cards. The cards are wildly imbalanced. And they're, they're even labeled as common, rare, epic. What? This isn't, a, this isn't a deck builder. So if I draw a card that gives my army plus one, and you draw the one that gives your army plus five, then I draw another one that gives me plus two. Those are my two armies, plus three. And you draw another one that gives plus four, you have plus nine. That's insanely unbalanced. And it does it with dice, too. You can buy these heroes who give you extra dice. You might draw a card that gives you an eight-sided die. Someone else might draw one that gives them a 20. I want to clarify, that's insane. And that's how this game is. It just has all these insane, crazy randomness in it, which just brings it down to just a, a pile of, who's this for? It's a little too complex to be a silly, light, you know, tactical game, and it's way random to make anyone else happy. All right, then we have Stefan Dora's Pirates. This is a reprint from Queen. Um, I never played the original game. I was told the original game was not very good. But this features Bonnie Lass. Who's Bonnie Lass? It's nobody. It's like a made-up universe. I, why couldn't they just call the main character Bonnie Lass, I guess? Why is this featuring Bonnie Lass like it's someone I'm supposed to know? All right, but beyond that, this game is... A really slow, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'm going to take this ship. It feels like a negotiation game done in slow motion through molasses. I want to be clear, I hate this game of all the ones here. And then the last one here, this is more of a bad game than it is one I necessarily hate, and that's Shazen. Now, Shazen has a few things here that might make it better. Um, one, as I heard, is a futuristic version, and there's also an Indian version, which I might enjoy better not knowing the politics of India. But this one's the U.S. version. This is the one I got. And in this game, it's an area control game that is really take that. Area control games tend to be that way as we put out pieces on the board. We take that and things like that. But in this one, first of all, once again, not a good rule book. That's the truth of most of these games. Uh, I guess the one I hate, Pirates, had a decent rule book. But the rest, they're not great rule books. But anyway, a bad rule book, but one I figured it out. So you're collecting cards, and also there's 80 modules in here that they try to stick in and things. But when you collect these cards, they give you special abilities. Some of them are clearly better than others, and they're all essentially about taking your pieces off, putting my pieces on. It's take that all over the place. But where this game comes to the point of Tom's never going to play this again is because it offers you choices that at the beginning of your turn, someone's going to read you a political card. Ooh. So let's pick one here at random. Should parents be allowed to homeschool their children, I ask you? Here are your choices. Yes, America means freedom, and freedom means raising my kids however I want to. Or no, homeschooled kids are freaks. Those are your two options. Now, what are you going to do in this situation? This is not a, this could possibly be in a different game where there would be some discussion about this. And I want to point out that I'm reading you here, and I'm kind of glad I pulled that card. This is one of the more tame cards in here. If you can think of a hot topic, it's in this. But the ant, the problem is, is if I pick the homeschool kids are freaks, I get two blue resources and one green. If I pick America means freedom, and freedom means raise my kids however I want to, I get two red resources and a yellow resource. Once you play the game, you kind of know how answering a question is going to give you resources. So you need to answer it the way that gives you resources, not the way that you might think. Which is weird, right? It feels a little off. You know, like, let's take something that's not very controversial. Like, is murder wrong, yes or no? And I'd be like, no, murder's fantastic. People should be murdering all the time because I want a certain color. Then why even have these cards if it's just pick between two different things? If the thing's to make you think, ah, it's very problematic mixing that in. I mean... Again, I read you one of the... I'm not going to read you the answers on these, but um, should political polling be banned? Okay, that's not too bad, I suppose. Should sports teams be banned from using Native American mascots and imagery? 
Do you support the introduction of a wealth tax? Should creationism be taught in public schools? Do you support universal health care? Do you support limits in campaign contributions? Some of them have like question marks on them. Should the police have the power to search an individual based solely on suspicion? Should women be prevented from serving in combat? Should violent video games be banned? Um, should American car companies be forced to make cars in the United States? Um, should the military use surgical drone strikes? Some of these things people are going to be really, really on fire about. And that does not make a good game, in my opinion. So, at the end of the day, I cannot... That, combined with the fact that the area control of this isn't that good, the look's kind of cool. It's like this sleek look, but it's not a game I ever want to play again. So there you go. A pile of games that I'm not real fond of, but maybe you feel differently. If so, let people know in the comments. Maybe some of these are games people should check out. Either way, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.